All right, guys, so I did walk around. When I was walking around, I took note of how you guys were measuring. And I definitely think that today is going to be important to talk about because when we do measure in chemistry um, and when you guys go on to more analytical sciences, uh, you are going to wind up having some classes and some studies where measuring precisely is important. And there's going to be some activities and, and classes uh, where measuring precisely is not as important. But for chemistry, when we do qual uh, sorry, when we do quantitative analysis, um, being as precise as possible is going to wind up being important because if you're not as important, uh, if you're not as precise when you do a measurement, then everything doesn't come out right the way it should. Right. So, we'll talk about this real quick. What we're talking about here is something called uncertainty. In measurements and what uncertainty basically is is the fact that when you use different devices notice there's three there's uh what do we have five different things here that can measure volumes these five different things have different amounts of precision to them. So they have different amounts of different degrees of magnitude of how accurate they are. It has to do with how they're marked. For instance, something like that graduated cylinder it appears to me that there's major markings every 10 divisions, right? The 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Uh, it looks to me like there's minor divisions also, and that there's 10 minor divisions. That means that it's precise to the ones place. Okay. When you measure on something like that, you're going to wind up being able to guess to the tenths place. You're going to have an uncertain digit in the tenths place. Syringes can have even better precision than that. They might be marked to the tenths place, and you're not going to be certain about the hundredths place value. Okay. The burette is used in chemistry class quite often. Well, it, it's used in uh, the acid base chapter, uh, and it has markings to the tenths place. So that means, again, the uncertain digit is going to be in the hundredths place value. Is this making sense? Do you notice what I'm saying? The lines, wherever the place value is, the uncertain place value is always going to be one place to the right of that, one place beyond that. Okay. Um, so it's important that measurements are taken carefully and careful attention is made to your scale markings. Okay. Measurements should always include the known numbers, which would be all of the lines, all of the place values, including the lines that are there plus one estimated digit. But when we're looking at the first I can hear 
So there are two terms that sometimes we throw around but are important to differentiate. Okay. Accuracy is going to talk about how close a measurement is to the accepted or the true value. Whereas precision is going to talk about how repeatable a measurement is. So here's the question. These are three measurements that were taken in lab. What can I state about these three measurements? Brian? All right, they're all in the hundredths place value. If I was to pin you guys down and ask you, are these data accurate or are they precise? Could you tell me? I mean, it could be accurate and precise, too. So it's possible to be both accurate and precise. It's possible to only have one. Let me show you this. Here's the analogy the textbook uses. They use a, they use a bullseye, uh, uh, bullseye analogy. Uh, and from their point of view, the correct answer is the bullseye. Okay. So notice in the image A here, they have good accuracy and good precision. So accuracy means that they all hit the bullseye. Precision means that they're all clustered around the bullseye. Part B there, there's poor accuracy. Nothing's near the bullseye. But there's good precision because all those darts hit in the same area. Okay. Poor accuracy and poor precision, the, they miss the target completely, they miss the bullseye completely, and they're everywhere. They're thrown sporadically. I think C is more like how I play darts. Aubrey? Ooh, could we have good accuracy with poor precision? What would that look like? That's a good question, right? Good, good accuracy would mean you're, uh, you're, aim you're still hitting the bullseye, right? Poor precision... Well, let's see. What if we did it like this? What if we said, let me get like red. Hopefully red will stand out well enough. Good accuracy. Good accuracy. Poor precision. You'd have to have a couple of them hit the bullseye, wouldn't you? So they'd have to be around here. I'm wondering if poor precision would mean that a couple of them would be out here. I'm not sure that it's possible to have good accuracy with poor precision because then we've still got some of them that aren't centered around the bullseye. I think that that would be impossible. Yeah, write down that you can't have. That's going to be my answer. You cannot have good accuracy but poor precision. These are the only three choices. <clears throat> Scientific notation. How many of you guys remember scientific notation? Pretty well? Okay, so this is this is just a brief overview. We should be able to do this in just a couple of minutes. All right. What is scientific notation? Well, it's a way of writing out really large or really small numbers. Uh, it's a systematic way, which means that you have to do it a specific way. Um, N is going to wind up being any number between 1 and 10. Okay, but it cannot be 10. So it's actually any number between 1 and 9.999999999999. Okay, and notice, guys, these are going to be real numbers, not whole numbers necessarily. So you can have decimals for capital N. Right, N times 10 to the nth, where the nth is a positive or a negative integer. And N winds up being some power of 10. 
That way, if you've got something to times 10 to the third, we're talking about thousands of things. 10 to the sixth, we're talking about millions. 10 to the ninth, we're talking about billions. Just makes it easier to look at the number and see right away how big or how small it is. I think the next slide is why would you use it? Which is exactly why I just explained, right? Where do you go back? Are we all set? Okay. Uh, so why would we use it? Um, huge numbers like this number here, right? What number is that? If you're trying to figure out what this big number is, you've got to start here and you got to go, okay, these are the thousands, these are the millions, these are the billions, these are the trillions, these are the, what comes after trillion? Quintillion? And then that's septillion? I think, no, no, what, what, it's, uh, it's five. Quadrillion. It's quadrillion. So this is two quad, two quadrillion, two hundred and thirty. Wouldn't it be so much easier to say two point two three times ten, three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen to the eighteenth? Isn't that a lot better? Okay, that's a lot easier. It's a lot more succinct. When you read that, you can tell that's a ginormous number, and you, it doesn't really matter how big it is because if I want to compare another number to it. Like, uh, I don't know, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. I can tell which number is bigger, right? By just glancing, which number is bigger? Right. How do we know that? The exponent there, right? We look at the exponent. Okay, you can't look at the 6 and the 2 because those don't tell you how big the number is. The exponent tells you how big the number is. All right. We don't want to deal with all those zeros, so we're just going to use the shortcut. Should I review real quick how to how to convert? Okay, so we'll convert backwards and forwards. Okay. So you convert two scientific notations. You've got a regular old number. Uh, if the decimal was moved to the left to make the number, then n is going to wind up being a positive number, and if the decimal is moved right, n is going to be negative. Um, I think if you think about it, it's easier than if you write down that rule and memorize it. Let me show you what I mean. With the number, hmm, where's my mouse? Okay, here it is. With the number that we've got here, it looks like, I'm going to put a comma in here so I can see it well. It looks like we have 500,502. The decimal usually lies right here, right? To make this scientific notation, I have to move the decimal. One, two, three, four five places to the left. So I'm going to write down 5.00502 times 10. How many places did I move the decimal? Five. Okay. And I'm going to write down fifth. The way I know whether it's a positive five or a negative five is I look at the original number. Okay. If it's positive five, it's bigger than one. Okay. It's a big number. That's what the scientific notation uh, indicates. If, on the other hand, we're looking at a small number like this one, notice in order to in order to meet the requirements on this one, I got to have a whole number in front of the decimal. So one, two, three. With this number, I got to move the decimal four times. So I'm going to get 4.98 times 10 to the fourth, but I've got to make that a negative fourth because the original number is smaller than one. Okay, so instead of trying to figure out whether I move the decimal right or left, I like to think about just whether the number's bigger or smaller than one. Because I think that's a lot easier and a lot more comprehensible, especially since you have to go backwards. You have to take scientific notation and turn it into regular notation. And the rules are the opposite when you do that. Right? If you move it left, you've got to think about whether it's positive or negative. Should I go about should I do the backwards way? Sure. Okay. So the backwards way, oops. Oh no, I don't have the backwards way here. All right, we don't have. To. All right, thank you. All right, we do have the backwards way. Hey, let's do this. We'll answer these three questions. I do have the backwards way.
One thing you guys are going to notice when you see things in textbooks right now, uh, I usually write a zero in front because they've done, they've done psychological studies and they say if you don't put a zero in front, that people sometimes miss that decimal completely. Okay, so I, I tend to do that, so don't worry if you don't, but I just tend to do it. So if you ask me why I keep writing a zero, uh, it's because I know about that. All right. The other thing is, do you guys know about the groupings? If you're writing a really small number, we don't write commas after the decimal, so they tend to group things. I believe your textbook does group numbers after the decimal, so it groups them in threes so that it's easier to kind of take a look at the number and see how small it is without they, they actually have a space here. They say zero, they, they say decimal zero 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 space zero six two eight. Okay, just in case you see it, that's why they do it. Okay. Oh, and finally, guys, we got this measurement here. What's this measurement going to be? What's this curvature called? Called the meniscus. Okay, so that's called the meniscus. Where do I actually measure from? Okay, I, I always measure at the lowest point, so I always measure on the, uh, you know, the straightest part, okay, which is going to be the lowest point right in the middle there. So we want to measure right there. Now what are we going to get for a measurement? Uh, okay, is it 30.5 or 30.05? Right. These small lines are worth what? Tenths? Ten this is tenths place. Oh, oh no, is it hundredths? 25, 26, 27. 20. No, hang on. Let's let's see what it is. Is it ones or tenths? 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. It's ones. So what is this? All right, 30.5, and that's not a proper measurement. Nope. Not centimeters. Ah, there we go. Not widgets. This is this is volume. So it's 30.5 milliliters. Okay. Widgets cubed. I like that. All right. So 30.5 milliliters. Uh, again, guys, we got a ones place value as the smallest line. So we need a tenths place value as our uncertain digits. Okay. And then the units are what I'm saying are necessary to have a measurement.